Hi, I'm Natalie Wong. Welcome to my handmade home in Los Angeles. I work in operations for a global media and entertainment company. My role is very task oriented and I work with engineers and developers. My background actually is marketing and event production. I loved drawing and writing when I was a kid. I was always that like nerd who really liked fashion. I've always just really loved design and art. And so when I purchased this apartment, I really dived in and became an accidental content creator, home influencer during the pandemic. Going room by room, showing people my failures and the DIY process like really made me a little relatable, but I do it as a champagne lifestyle on a beer budget. Welcome to the living room. This is the love at first sight room. I stepped into the space and immediately knew I needed to live here. The 10 foot ceilings, the original crown molding, original hardwood floors, this fireplace mantle is original. Just these little like architectural elements that you don't find in new spaces. The building was built in the mid 1930s and it's French Normandy style, but with Hollywood Regency kind of starting in the 30s. I completely pivoted and decided to go Hollywood Regency versus French Regency. I wanted to recapture that old Hollywood retro glam style, especially since it was built in that era. I just really leaned into that whole historic side of things. Originally when I moved in, the wall colors were all this very pale pinky beige and in addition to the color as well as the honey floors, the wall right behind the TV was completely mirrored. It looked like a ballet studio in here, so that was one of the first things I did was remove the mirrors on the walls. And then during the pandemic, I repainted it the sage green. I feel like I'm in this season in my life where I'm really gravitating towards green. Even if it's clothes or jewelry, I'm like, oh, what is this? To make it a little bit more cohesive, I use the same green elements around the house and I've been using a lot of like black and gold elements as well and also blending new and old is something I do. There is a sense of history that comes with owning a secondhand piece really makes a house a home and using the sustainable decorative elements that's something that I really try to achieve with my design. This credenza was from a lady up in Sherman Oaks. That chair is vintage. The chandelier was actually an eBay find, so I think shipping it was more than the actual chandelier. There's thrift shops, there's garage sales, there's yard sales, there's estate sales. I go everywhere to find vintage, not just through garage sales, but also when I travel internationally and domestically. The bar cart came from the estate of David Arquette, randomly. It needs some repair work, but you know, I just cover it with a lot of alcohol, so it helps. I wish champagne would magically appear, but nothing actually happens. I have to bring my own champagne. The DIY I've done in here, oh, actually there were two. I didn't hire someone to like wallpaper. My mom's bestie and I got wallpaper glue and figured it out. So we removed the mirrors, put it up. We then had to prime it. And then during the pandemic, I repainted it the sage green to match the rest of the space. I love that the wallpaper is just a little subtle element because there's already so much going on in this room. Another like DIY hack was framing the television, the poor man's frame TV. Got some crown molding from Home Depot, $50 worth of materials, built out this frame and framed the TV with it. I love it. I would say I'm proud of every DIY because I honestly would prefer not doing a DIY and just hiring someone to do it for me. But you know, when you're not working and you have limited resources, then you gotta do it yourself. We've done a lot of work here, so I'm quite proud of it. This is the dining room. During the pandemic, this became kind of my Zoom background. The built-ins are original. I just painted the doors black and then added these little peacock handles. Another DIY hack I did in here was I stenciled the wall because the walls are textured and I've been told don't wallpaper over texture walls. You need to skim coat. I didn't want any of that so I decided to stencil instead. It was just painting and stenciling. Everything else has been mostly sourced secondhand. The dining table is an Arthur Court style dining table. I found it on Facebook Marketplace when I was up in the Bay Area with my parents. 
bought it from a guy, much to my mom's annoyance, and then convinced my parents to drive it down on one of their visits about a month later. And here I really wanted to incorporate a lot of blue elements, so I had my friend Julie help me reupholster the dining chairs. We bought fabric from the fabric district and then we got some cushions to reupholster with the fabric we bought. I have amazing friends. Next, let's head upstairs so we can check out the bedroom. In LA, I don't wear shoes anymore since the pandemic. Shoe optional in this household. This is my bedroom. Enormous for one person, I know, but it's kind of segmented the room to different little areas. So I have my bed, obviously. There's a little area where I get dressed in the morning. I have this little reading nook over there with a the settee. And I really leaned into the millennial pink. When I moved in, the rooms upstairs were a salmon color and the walls in the guest room were like a dark, mud brown, which I don't know why anyone would choose that. So I replaced the carpet with hardwood floors and then just repainted it pink. Just being really unabashedly feminine with my design choices. And I'm still here riding the millennial pink train. And then we have the fireplace over here to kind of break up the space, which was actually a secondhand purchase. Samira is a DIY. That is basically a piece of acrylic that I cut down and I spray painted the acrylic. I'm really quite proud of this and people are often like impressed that this is not an actual mirror. This room is inspired by Palm Beach lifestyle. And so there's a lot of palm references in here with the chandelier, the plants in here, cabana service. These doors, were originally sliding doors that were not functioning. And so I had the idea to mimic the living room downstairs by getting French doors and then fit them into the space here. Then I created this little like nice little jungle sanctuary outside. Again, found some secondhand furniture online and had them brought here. I just love how big it is. And then also the veranda outside. I was just trying to make a nice little cocoon of space where I could wake up and feel happy. All these different secondhand finds and pieces I picked up from traveling and pieces that have traveled really make my space unique. And last, let's head into the office, which is my closet office. This is probably the room that gets the most use small but mighty. I work from here, I work out in here. It's also a closet. The paint color in here is similar to the one downstairs. I just gravitate towards the sage green. The chandelier you see here is actually a little brother version of the one in the living room, tying in cohesive pieces. The flamingo wallpaper on the doors of the closet is what caused me to become an accidental content creator. I was featured in an article in Apartment Therapy for Closet Door Hacks. That evolved into their editor finding me to do a home tour. And that is how I became an accidental content creator. I and mean, over the course of these past six years, I just kind of learned how to like curate my style a little bit better. I have to say like, it was not bad but it's not for everybody. So either task grabbit it out or be careful. Like and subscribe to Handmade for more home tours just like this. Did I get that? Now I'm like in my head.